Good, so I'm going to give a talk on climate change and food security today. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot be with you. This is a carbon-free presentation and perhaps it's a vision of the future as we cut down our carbon footprints. So this first uh, diagram over here, for 650,000 years carbon dioxide has not been above this line, this 300 parts per million. Since 1950 we've shot above the line. I get slightly worried that 1953 was my birth date and I hope there's no connection between my birth date and carbon dioxide emissions. So what does this mean for agriculture? This is a figure of crop suitability for 50 crops to 2050. The red diagrams, the red colors are showing major decreases in suitability of crops. The, the orange also a slight degree of uh, reduction in crop suitability. And as you can see for Africa, the reduction is dramatic. Throughout Africa, there are uh, major reductions in crop suitability. This is uh, water resources in the Limpopo Valley for four countries. It's four different climate change scenarios. And as you can see, between 15 and 35 percent reductions in runoff. This is going to have major negative implications for, for irrigation. It's not only about the future, the 2030s and the 2050s, it's extreme events already now. So the prediction from the climate scientists is that there's going to be a greater frequency of extreme events and there's, these events are going to be more severe. This diagram shows that we can already pick up the impacts of climate change on agriculture. This is changes in growing season temperatures in the last 28 years. The reds are the, the big changes, the higher temperatures. They've also done impacts of wheat and maize. And so this figure over here, you can see declines in wheat, in wheat yield. And this is separated. This is the, the piece that they've taken out is the impact of climate change. Overall, 5% declines in wheat yields. So the message number one is climate change has arrived and we need to adapt. Farmers are always adapting. So they've been coping, they've been uh, adapting to each season. Unfortunately, sometimes those adaptations are maladaptions into the future. So coping strategies can reduce adaptive capacity in the longer term. Uh, these particular farmers in southern Africa turn to the woodlands for uh, income uh, producing charcoal. This reduces their capacity to generate that kind of income into the future. So message number two is we need planned, accelerated and transformative adaptation. Accelerated because the, the a speed of change is unprecedented, it is believed. Why transformative? This diagram illustrates why. So we can do incremental adjustments. For example, with coffee producers, they can change the varieties, they can change the amount of shade plants they do. But perhaps for much climate change, we're going to need transformative adaptation. Perhaps farmers will have to move up mountains by 500 meters in order to get cooler climates. Or perhaps coffee production is impossible and going to, have to move in other, other forms of agriculture or even to move off farm. It's not all negative, uh, so now some positive uh, news. Climate finance is likely to increase significantly. For example, the Green Climate Fund, which was proposed in Mexico, in Cancun, uh, is hoped that it will be a US 100 billion by the year 2020. There's also a market in carbon, this shows the uh, dramatic increase in volumes of carbon traded up to 2008 and potentially agriculture could get a piece of the carbon market. So message number three, that there are, there are new opportunities and we need to, in order to capture them, we need to climate proof agriculture we, and we need to demonstrate uh, successful early action. Forestry has got on the agenda of, of the climate negotiations because it's shown that it can achieve uh, early action, uh, successful early action. 
Message number four, uh, we need a new climate smart agriculture. Uh, it's a bit dangerous to, word, to use the word new because many of the technologies and practices are known. So what do I need by, mean by climate smart agriculture? We have to aim for three outcomes, a food security outcome, an adaptation outcome, and a mitigation outcome. Ideally, we're looking for practices and technologies in the center of this diagram where we capture all three outcomes. But climate smart agriculture is understanding the synergies and trade-offs amongst these different goals. So what do we need to do to uh, make climate smart agriculture a reality? We need, to, we need the tools to make clever investment choices. These very complicated and complex interactions between long-term adaption and short-term adaption, between adaptation and mitigation, between food security and mitigation. We need to understand all those synergies and trade-offs and be able to uh, uh, make a pathway forward. Uh, we also need the right incentives and institutional arrangements for ensuring that uh, technologies and practices are taken up by farmers. Many of the technologies that we have on the shelf already are suitable for climate smart agriculture, but they're not being implemented. And we need new research to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. So how can agriculture produce more food but with less emissions? And how can we increase the productivity of agriculture under new climates? Message number five, we need to make a major push on climate risk management. Uh, I've said already that the extremes are already with us, so this is something that we can do today, and it can be incredibly useful for long-term ad adaptation. This is some of the, the portfolio of things that we can do with climate uh, risk management. Building resilient livelihoods, managing the whole food trade system, improving climate information and services. I'm not going to go through the list, but for example, index-based insurance is key. Improving early warning systems for the uh, food, food system is key. Tailoring climate seasonal forecasts for farmers is key. Message number six, uh, farmers' efforts need to be supported by policies, incentives and knowledge. So I'm not going to go through all the kinds of policies that are needed. Many of them will be touched on by other speakers and in the discussion. But yes, three specific climate-related ones. So the first one, agriculture should become the centerpiece of COP17 in Durban. This is the Africa COP. Agriculture was removed from the negotiating text 24 hours before the, uh, before the final text was agreed in Cancun. So agriculture fell off the agenda. This time we need to make sure that agriculture is on the agenda. Second bullet point, we need major investments in regional knowledge networks. Uh, adaptation to climate change is all about adaptive capacity and behavioral change. This is knowledge intensive. Uh, a bank such as the Africa Development Bank can play a major role in facilitating these uh, knowledge networks. And the last bullet point, from satellite to cell phone. In one of our study areas, we find that farmers, 60% of farmers, have access to cell phones. And yet, not a single one of them is receiving climate information on those cell phones yet. Uh, the dream would be that within a few years' time, farmers are receiving useful information on their cell phone they can make in order to make judgments about what to do in the coming growing season. So, uh, thank you for your... Uh, your your attention. These are the, the summarized six messages that I've discussed. And you've heard me talking today. If you, if you go to our website, you can hear the farmers talking about a two degree warmer world. These are uh, brilliant videos. Uh, they photo films uh, from three different countries where climate change is already being felt by farmers. Thanks a lot.